Welcome back to Meds Made Easy. My name is Tarun. Today we're going to be talking about Vicodin and Norco and then as well as hydrocodone. It's all kind of joined together. So Vicodin traditionally in the pharmacy world is hydrocodone slash acetaminophen or known as APAP uh, 5x500. Norco is 10 by 325 so 10 milligrams of hydrocodone, 325 milligrams of acetaminophen. And um, so yes, so the opioid crisis, this medication is super popular. Everyone understands what this is. Uh, back in the day that this stuff was dispensed at a very, very high volume, which is why we have the opioid crisis today. So it's used mainly just for pain management of any kind, cancer, surgeries, injuries, you name it. And essentially the way that it works is by binding to the opioid receptors, uh, helping cut off the pain pathway. So uh, whenever you get injured anywhere, your body sends pain signals up to your brain saying, ow, ow, ow. And what this medication does is it cuts off that sensor. So you, so even though the injury site is still sending up signals to your brain, this medication allows it to cut it off so your body, for all intents and purposes, doesn't feel pain. That's kind of how pain, the mechanism in your body, it works. Um, and then usually you're on other things besides this medication to help fix what's going on. So if you have like a cervical, a spine issue, or um, if you were in a car accident or something like that, you usually have like inflammation or something that needs to heal, and so you take hydrocodone or any sort of hydrocodone product to cut the pain off in your brain while your body heals because you're taking other medications or rehabbing, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how it all works and then that's kind of where all the problems start as well. Um, you also notice CNS depression, that that's part of the mechanism by cutting off the pain sensors. It also is a downer, it downs you. So which is why you have to be very careful about driving. Most people cannot drive on this medication. I have had some people do it, um, the official Pharmacy rules are you, you just don't like you don't drive on this. That's just what we tell most of our patients But some have been popping this stuff like crazy and so they can drive on it. They feel perfectly fine They're not sedated anyway. Okay, cool But officially what I have to tell you is it causes sedation Don't drive or operate heavy machinery while you're on this medication. There are black box warnings for addiction um, overdose potential, neonatal withdrawal, uh, hepatotoxicity, and accidental ingestion, right? This medication is very, very dangerous. Uh, as we've kind of seen, it, when you stack it with other depressants, right, Xanaxes, anti-anxiety medications, things like that, it makes the addiction part of it so much worse, the, could, the effect is worse too. A lot of people would drink on this medication, it's like a party drug too. It's all just kind of bad news. This, this medication is an opioid, right? It's a derivative of like morphine and things like that. Um, so you have to be very careful about how you take this medication. A lot of doctors now rarely prescribe this stuff anymore. They usually give you something else a lot more minor to kind of manage your pain. Uh, and that's, that's just kind of how it has to go, guys. I mean, this stuff is just dangerous. It's been so manipulated, so overused, so abused that we just like, I haven't, I can't remember the last time I dispensed hydrocodone. I think it's been over a year and a half, two years now. We, ju we just don't do it anymore. So, uh, pregnancy, can't be on this medication while you're pregnant. If you're breastfeeding, can't take this medication while you're pregnant. It'll harm you in each and every way. Uh, if you have renal or liver issues, this stuff has to get titrated. So uh, you, you need your dosages adjusted. So make sure your doctors know about all the medications you're on, including this product, especially if you have several different doctors. Uh, if you're trying to get off this medication, keep in mind you can't just quit cold turkey unless you were just on it for like 10, 12 days for surgery or something. Uh, you usually need to titrate down. Uh, otherwise, if you just quit cold turkey and you've been on it for a while, it'll cause a lot of withdrawal. Uh, what's the timeline for your withdrawal? Uh, uh, to subside, well that really depends on the individual. I know I've gotten a lot of flack online about, um, well, you know, you said a couple weeks, it's been months for me. So uh, it, the conclusion I've come up with is it's very individual specific on how you're able to withdraw off this medication completely. Um, let's see here, Ta -da -da. I'll put up a list of side effects here. Um, there's a lot of different side effects that can happen with this medication. I'm going to talk about ones that have a 10% or more frequency, which is really just constipation and nausea. So you will get severe, severe constipation on this medication. So if you're taking it post-op for a few days after surgery, you should probably be on stool softeners as well. Um, not stimulant laxatives, but stool softeners. So like Colace, 
Um, anything when you look on the back, this is like docusate calcium or docusate sodium. Those are probably really ideal to take while on this medication. Um, you know, you're going to see things like look little spikes in your blood pressure and things like that, but that's definitely in lower frequency in the population, doesn't happen as often. But nausea and constipation are massive. Those will almost always will happen with most people. Uh, I don't even want to give you a number on it, but it's the majority of you that will get on this medication, you will experience these two, these two side effects as well as a few others, but those are the big, big, big ticket ones. Uh, guys, I think that is it. Oh, kicks in. So if you're taking regular release medications, right, there's so many different forms of hydrocodone that are out on the market. There's liquids, there's extended releases, there's your regular Vicodins, Norcos, I'm going to talk about those. Those generally peak in about an hour, which is why a lot of people take them like every four hours, which is not great, but that's how I've seen it in practice. Uh, in about an hour, you're seeing the full effect of this medication. So it comes on quick and then it leaves quick and then hence why people need more and more and more and more. So, guys, I think that's it. I think we covered everything. If there's something I haven't, leave it down below in the uh, comments. Uh, any concerns, et cetera, hit subscribe. Let us know how we're doing. We're just trying to help with these videos, guys. We'll see you next time on Meds Made Easy. Bye.